And as we've been reporting, Nick, and you understand this very well, you've been to Dagestan, we are also seeing these multiple videos of very angry crowds over there storming an airport in Dagestan, in this Russian uh, Republic, uh, after the arrival of a flight from Tel Aviv. Tell us a little bit more about that. And as I said, I know you've been there. Yeah, it's, it's deeply worrying for, for anyone from Israel, uh, for, or for that matter, for the Jewish community around the world, because this is just, it appears to be yet another place where anti-Israeli or anti-Jewish sentiment is being expressed. What surprises me specifically about this incident today is how in a Russian republic that has a high security presence. So the last time I was in Mahachkala uh, airport in Dagestan, which is where this happened, was following the Boston Marathon bombing in 2013. Uh, and that was because the bombers' families had come, family had come from there. And there was, we discovered, uh, you know, an undercurrent uh, of radical Islamist behavior amongst a small element of the population and a high Russian security presence in that area. So in, a, in an area where there is a high and strong Russian security prevalence, how could the airport itself today be stormed? It comes at a time today, shortly after, the, is, the, the foreign, Israel's foreign ministry here called in the Russian ambassador to ask him why Russia has not unequivocally um, uh, condemned Hamas's uh, brutal attack on the 7th of October. And to that point as well, foreign ministry officials in Moscow just cu a couple of days ago meeting with senior Hamas officials. So this sort of apparent security lapse in Mahachkala Airport in Dagestan, allowing this flight from Tel Aviv arriving to be stormed by crowds, um, the timing raises questions. We don't have the answers. And of course, most of all, just deeply worrying and, and disturbing for Israelis, Wolf. Very disturbing. And it's interesting because of my conversation with Israelis here in Tel Aviv uh, over the past, what, hour or two since we got word of this angry mob attacking this uh, Israeli plane that landed in Dagestan. Israelis are, are complaining that it's not just uh, anti-Israel statements that were being hurled at the Israelis who were on this plane, but it was anti-Semitic statements as well. And they're concerned about leaving the country right now, going to various places where there is not only increased anti-Israeli feeling, but anti-Semitic feelings as well. And I assume uh, you've been hearing stuff along those lines where you are here, uh, here in Israel. Uh, absolutely, Wolf. People are very concerned. They're concerned not just about their security here, but also worried about the reaction around the world that has not uh, come out so strongly and condemned uh, the actions of Hamas on the uh, on the 7th of October and the, and, the, and the implications of what that means, not just, uh, you know, anti-Jewish, um, anti the state of Israel, but 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 anti-Semitic. And it's it's deeply tr troubling, deeply worrying for, for Jewish communities all across the world. Um, we can look at capitals in Europe where, where attacks on the Jewish community have gone up and the community is forced to, to take steps to protect their own security at levels that are just would be unfathomable for the rest of the community. So absolutely, it, it is very, very deeply felt. And it's something people here do talk about, Wolf. It certainly is very disturbing indeed. And Nick Robertson is steroid. Stay safe over there, as I tell you every day. We'll get back to you soon. Uh, Jim, you're picking up our coverage. Thanks, Wolf. Tonight, another U.S. military ship heading towards uh, the coast of Israel. Pentagon officials tell CNN they are repositioning a Marine Rapid Response Force in the Mediterranean to be closer to the conflict. The move comes amid fears that the Israel Hamas war could widen to include other countries. CNN's Oren Lieberman is reporting from the Pentagon for us. Oren, what are you learning? Jim, we've been watching very closely the USS Bataan and the 26th Marine Expeditionary Unit, a Marine Rapid Response Force that has a number of mission essential tasks, including special operations and, crucially, a non-combatant evacuation, known in, in military lingo as a NEO. Over the course of the past several weeks, it's been in the Middle East. It was initially making its way toward Israel, but it was supposed to be off the southern coast in the Red Sea. According to two U.S. officials, that plan has now changed. It is still in the Red Sea, but now on its way north. It will go through the Suez Canal 
and into the Eastern Med, putting it very close to Israel and Jordan. This, as there is already a carrier strike group there, the USS Gerald R. Ford carrier strike group, and then the USS Dwight D. Eisenhower, which was initially heading for the Eastern Med, will be there for a bit, but will then make its way down into the waters of the Middle East. In fact, that is where the USS Bataan and the Marine Rapid Response Force are coming from. Now, why is this significant? Other than it is an overwhelming show of force and a message meant to deter Iran and Iranian proxies from getting involved in this. Well, John Kirby, the uh, Strategic Communications Coordinator for the National Security Council, early last week on Tuesday said it would be irresponsible and imprudent if the U.S. didn't plan for contingencies. Among those are possible evacuation of Israel and Lebanon if the situation deteriorates. And that's obviously a crucial if. We have seen some back and forth across the Israel-Lebanon border, but not a massive escalation there. But there is still a very real concern about that. Jake Sullivan, the National Security Advisor, said the risk is real when asked about a regional conflict. The U.S. is trying to separate the conflict in Gaza from other parts of the Middle East, but it has been unable to do that, certainly in the eyes of Iran and Iranian proxies, crucially Hezbollah in Lebanon. So the Marine Rapid Response Force with the USS Bataan making its way to the Eastern Med would give the U.S. an option, a crucial asset and capability, if it gets to the point where the U.S. needs to seriously consider a NEO, a non-combatant evacuation. Now, it's important to note that that order hasn't been given. But late last week, the State Department, uh, the embassy in Beirut, said it is advisable for U.S. citizens in Beirut to leave now, to leave before the crisis begins. So the U.S. very clearly looking at the possibility that the conflict in Gaza escalates into a wider regional conflict with a particular focus on Israel's border with Lebanon, the possibility that a second front opens up and that Israel and Hezbollah are in open war. In that case, the capability, one of the crucial capabilities if the U.S. decides it needs to order a NEO, a non-combatant evacuation order, would be that Marine Rapid Response Force, the USS Bataan, along with the 26th Marine Expeditionary Unit, the MU, making its way to the Eastern Med. All right, Orrin Lieberman at the Pentagon, thank you very much. Let's discuss further with retired Lieutenant General Mark Hurtling, the former Commanding General for Europe and the 7th Army. Uh, General Hurtling, uh, what do you make of what uh, Orrin Lieberman was just talking about, this rapid response force getting closer to this situation? Uh, the, I mean, obviously, uh, it, could, it, it could happen. I mean, where they may uh, need to intervene and, and evacuate Americans. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, exactly, Jim. And what I tell you is, as commander of U.S. Army Europe back in 2013, we worked with the Marine Expeditionary Units in the in the area at the time. Uh, it was a different MU, uh, but this one, the 26th MU uh, Marine Expeditionary Unit, special operations capable. It is not a uh, special operations unit, but it can work with special operations forces, are trained to conduct NEO operations. And in fact, back in my day, about 10 years ago, we actually planned a NEO operation in Beirut uh, out of Lebanon. Uh, it didn't happen, uh, but certainly it could today, given the increase of, uh, of uh, tensions in the area. What I'd suggest is that rapid response force, that Marine Mu, is capable of doing all sorts of things. Contributing to uh, the execution of a NEO is one of the most important things they do. But what I'd say, Jim, is when I was there, and this was a long time ago, there were 100,000 uh, and more American citizens inside of Lebanon. And we were planning for the uh, non-combatant evacuation of all of them at the time. Luckily, we yeah. didn't have to do this. This is a very tough mission. The MU will contribute to that. It has about 2,200 Marines on board the Bataan, uh, that ex amphibious ship uh, that would contribute to this. So, yeah, this yeah. is an important factor of having a, a contingency operation ready to perform operations in Beirut and in Lebanon. Right. Better to have it there and not need it than to, to need it and not have it there. Um, and we're also getting, right. I want to ask you about this, General Hurley. We're also getting chaotic, this uh, really kind of crazy new video that's come in from uh, Dagestan, the Russian Republic of Dagestan. I'm sure you've seen this video. The uh, Russian officials say a crowd protesting the Israel-Hamas war forced their way into the airport, airport after a flight from Israel landed, and just all hell breaks loose. What do you think about what's going on here? Uh, th this, is, uh, this has got to be very worrisome. It, it is worrisome, Jim, and, but you have to set, set the understanding of the context. Uh, Dagestan is a, is a Soviet or a Russian republic, uh, and about 80% of the population there are Islamic uh, 
you know, their, their background is in, is in Islam. So they are very concerned about Jews coming into the area. Uh, the reaction is unbelievably anti-Semitic, but you can understand this, and I'd point to the fact that Russia and Iran have been coordinating many of their actions. So when you see a republic within the Russian sphere, Dagestan, uh, it's, it's connected to Georgia and Azerbaijan in the area, with about 80% of their, their uh, population being Muslims, they would not support any Jewish immigrants to the area. So you're going to see this kind of actions in those kind of areas and in other areas. But it's extremely troubling as we see Jews trying to get out of Israel, uh, trying to escape kind of the, the consequences of what's happening from Hamas. But you also have to understand that the members or, or the population of Dagestan is very supportive of the Iranian revolution and the fact that they are supporting what's going on by Hamas and Hezbollah inside of Israel itself. 